Hello, YouTube. <laughs> oh, man. Thought I would give you guys a quick update on what's happening on Denoy's world. <laughs> okay, uh, for those of you who've been following the vlog, you know I just picked up um, a new RV. Actually, it's a used RV. It's new to me. Uh, uh, we've named it um, Good Enough. Anyhow, I w had to tag it. You know, I had to get a, a tag on it and transfer the title and all that. Uh, the RV was actually originally titled Out of State in Virginia. Yeah. And the guy I had bought it from never bothered to transfer the title to Florida. Okay. So that was kind of a problem. The second thing is that the title itself in Virginia wrote that the unit had 65,000 miles on it. But the RV actually only has 62,000 something miles on it. And when I went to transfer the title, I made a mistake and scribbled out something. Which it turns out you're not supposed to ever scribble out any of that stuff on a title. <laughs> <laughs> and my driver's license doesn't match my mailing address. So there was a lot of stuff that was wrong. Well, what happened was when I first got the RV, I went into the tag agency. I didn't take the RV there, and they told me they needed to see the RV. That was when I bought the RV, but hadn't picked it up yet. They said they need to physically see the RV so they can verify the odometer reading and the, the VIN and all that other stuff. Well, if you saw the videos on my white knuckle driving experience trying to get the RV from Orlando to Brevard County, then you know that um, I'm a little weary right now of driving the RV for any distance until I can get the mechanical issues straightened out. So I didn't want to drive the RV to the MV, you know, the DMV, where they could actually physically look at it because I was afraid that... Uh, it could get in an accident or fall apart or die on the drive there. It's such a big thing and stuff's not working and won't go above 35 miles an hour and you'd have to go during like regular uh, traffic which like right now is rush hour which is when I would get off work and try to drive through rush hour in the RV and this traffic on these little roads. So the lady told me that what I could do was I could verify, have the um, have the VIN verified by a notary or the police. <laughs> and I didn't want to call the police to deal with the police because then they'd have to come and uh, check it out and deal with me and it could start a whole nother chain of events that I didn't really feel like getting into, you know. Um, so I decided to try the notary and the problem was how do you get a notary to look at your vehicle? You kind of have to take your vehicle to the notary. They're not going to hop in my car with me or follow me out to the RV to look at it. So where the RV was parked, there was a business nearby that I decided to go just knock on there randomly to see if they had a notary. <laughs> Yeah, and they did have a notary, but the notary wasn't working, wasn't there that day, at that time. So they were like, well, you know, there is a notary down the street at a, um, the bank. And I was like, man, I'm going to have to try to go to the bank and try to get the notary to do it. I'll even pay the money, whatever it costs to just have a notary step outside, uh, verify the VIN number and record the information and stamp it. So, I hopped in the RV and um, <laughs> was prepared to have white knuckles again and drove it down the street, you know, a couple blocks to, to the, the bank that um, the business had told me was there. And it turned out the bank was a credit union that was actually my credit union from like 10 years ago. Not 10 years ago, more like, more like about four years, five years ago. So, but I kind of dropped that credit union. I didn't really close the account, but I just never went back to it because what happened was 
when I went into arrears, it's a complicated story. When I went into arrears, the IRS levied the account and seized all money. So then I stopped putting money deposits and stuff into that account, even though I never officially closed it. So I don't know if the bank has closed it or not. I don't know what the status is. And my address has changed about three or four times since uh, I had that bank account. But anyhow, I walk into the credit union and I pulled out my membership card. <laughs> Even though I wasn't sure if it was valid or not. But I was like flashing the card to make sure they all saw my card. You know, I was like, yeah, I'm a member. <laughs> see, see my card? So I'm walking in there with the card and I go up to the um, one of the representatives sitting at the desk. I said, hey, I'm hoping you guys can, he says, can I help you here? And I said, yeah, I'm hoping you can help me. And I explained to him the situation with the RV and how I needed a notary to verify the VIN number and then, you know, stamp it and stuff so I could take it to the um, DMV and have them um, tag it and title it and everything for me. So then he wasn't sure they offered that service. <laughs> so, so then uh, he called his boss or whatever and they said, yeah, go ahead and do it for me. So I got him to go outside and he verified the information and then he wrote down the actual mileage. And I'm like, oh, great. He wrote down the mileage, which is going to be less than what shows up on the, um, the title. So that's going to be a potential sna snafu. <laughs> so anyhow, I get the stuff from him, thank him. And then I quickly return the RV back to the parking spot, you know, where base camp or home camp or base camp, I guess I'll call it base camp, and um, hopped into Little Blue too, and quickly rushed over to the DMV before they closed. They were like getting ready to close, so I quickly rushed over there and got in just in time. And sure enough, I go there, and they get me into the back, you know. Um, got me in there right away pretty much which was good anyhow I go back there and the lady is looking at all the stuff and saying stuff's mismatching I'm like oh great she's like you know the title has all this scratched off stuff you're not supposed to have a scratched off stuff you have a bill of sale I'm saying, I got the bill of sale and she's like well you know the um, the VIN number isn't clear on here I was the one who wrote the VIN number and I wrote it, but on the, there was a B and an 8. And when I wrote it, you know, how you do a B or an 8, and it looks like, I was trying to make it look like a B, but it looked like an 8. So then I drew another line to make it look like a B. And then she considered that um, an altercation. Saying that that was an issue, that was a problem. I was like, oh man, this is like my fourth visit to the DMV. Third or fourth visit to the DMV, back and forth. And I can't go back to Orlando to get another bill of sales. This was like driving me nuts. So then she went to call her supervisor and they decided to let that pass. And then of course she comes back and she's like, well, you know, your, um, your house address and your, mail your mailing address and your driver's license address doesn't match. <laughs> I'm like, well, can you just make the title out to the mailing address? Because that's where I get all my bills. That's where the um, insurance and everything comes. The driving license address is like a temporary address. It's where I was staying. It's it's a complicated story. But just can you please just make <laughs> can you please just make it to the the mailing address where I get the uh, the insurance? Because that's where everything goes. If you want to get anything to me, you gotta send it to this mailing address. So she's like, okay, she'll go ahead and sneak it by and just let it go. And um, don't tell anyone. And now I'm telling all of you too. That's pretty bad. <laughs> so anyhow, um, we get that done. Okay, so she's like, you got insurance on it, proof of insurance. I pull out the insurance card and everything. Then um, she asked me if I want to register it till next year or just the end of this year for my birthday, which is coming up, you know. So I was like, so how much is the difference? She says, well, it'll be $50, $57 more or whatever for another year. So I was like, you know what? I'll just go ahead and just do it till my birthday um, and then deal with that other next year later <laughs> because right now money is tight. And so she did it. And I now have a tag 
So the RV is all legal. It's got a, um, a valid tag on it. It's got insurance on it. I need to fix the t tag holder. The tag holder on the back had broken is what it was. I, I couldn't find a tag holder, but it turned out it did have a tag holder, but it's broken, so I'm trying to look for a piece of metal to, to make a little new tag holder. But the other, the, the reason I'm actually here driving is I, I came over to Walmart because as you know, I've been running power from the RV. I've been using the vehicle house battery, the new house battery that I bought, which is 135 amp hours. The problem with it is I don't have a means of charging it other than um, the 25 watt solar panel. And that didn't work so well because 25 watts is only generating about two amps. <laughs> and you know, two amps charging rate it's not going to charge that battery back up throughout the day. And I've been using it for everything from the bathroom, you know, running the uh, the pumps for the water to all the lights and the fan and also charging my phone. I use it like I use uh, the battery inside a little blue too, you know. So it wasn't completely charging up. And then what I had to do was I would take little blue and go park it next to the RV and jumper the two cars and let little blue sit there for 20 to 30 minutes charging up the RV battery, the RV house battery, which was working, but it's getting expensive on gas. Idling for 20, 30 minutes at a time is eating up gasoline in little blue too, and letting a car sit at idle, which I'm doing right now, isn't that good. So um, what happened is basically I've decided that I'm not going to uh, do that anymore. So I am going to build a cheap DIY, do-it-yourself um, battery charging cable. The jumper f from um, Little Blue 2 to um, good enough so that I can park Little Blue 2 and run a cable from Little Blue 2's house battery system, which I charge fully when I go to work each day, and have that charge up or you know link in to good enough house battery system so I have two batteries at night at least that's the plan so stay tuned look for the next part of this uh, I guess this series right here this episode part two of this episode where I'm heading I'm going into Walmart right now to buy a DIY uh, cable that we're gonna use to link the two batteries together so stay tuned for that <laughs>